In this episode, we will be going about how we do a modification of factory spacer to fit this thing. As you can see, it's pretty tall, and it's beefy, and it's big. But really, it's a simple thing. It's through the wonderful worlds of modifications that we can achieve this goal. Now, one of the things you have to definitely look at is the diameter of motor. And I'm going to walk over to the car to look at something inside. <clears throat> Once again, uh, the track. Always. I don't know why it is with car companies, why they can't possibly use this big area in the middle. There's nothing there. They always have to put tracks behind speakers. Well, this is a very, and this is only maybe about an inch and a half tops depth from here, from the steel piece to the track itself. So that does uh, pose a, a pretty big difficult problem. But, again, through the magics of modification, this can be done. The first modifi mo modification we must do is to actually gut the speaker out of this. This is a single piece of plastic, okay? <coughs> when they've actually made the basket as part of the main frame and then they just assemble the speaker in here. Now most of the times I have, everybody always tells me, every customer on the planet says, oh but I don't want to throw in my sock speakers and I go like, well why? And he's, well because I want to put them in later on. In the history I've been doing this for 26 years or so and stuff like that, the amount of people that actually put their stock speakers back in is maybe, maybe 1% of 1% of the people actually reinstall their speakers in there. Most of the times, they don't got the time and they just leave the speakers in there. And so it's not a big deal. Uh, now what we're going to do is, like I said, we're going to gut this out. Now what I did was, <coughs> I just simply took a jigsaw and I cut out around the X perimeter of this. Now the reason why I'm doing this, using this plastic ring and stuff like that, instead of doing it like a piece of wood and stuff like that, is for two reasons. One, it's a hell of a lot faster to do, and it's pre-built. It's a strong structure. This is a circle. You know, the amount of forces that are being applied on it, you cannot screw this thing up. You'll screw it on, it'll fit exactly the way it's supposed to fit in the door. No problems. The second is, is that our CX and X series drivers utilize a composite material basket, <coughs> which means that these two pieces of materials are similar in terms of, of, of the ability for me to bond. So all I have to do is take acetone and clean the perimeter of this off. Okay, this is a, a painted surface. We're going to clean this perimeter off so that the, um, the composite material is exposed. And then I'm going to acetone wash this and acetone wash this. And then I'm just going to simply take some black uh, rubber toughened CA that I have, and I'm going to lay a perimeter bead around this, especially on the edges, because if, if you can see this, this is actually hollowed out in certain areas. Uh, it, it's kind of hard to see, but it, that's what's happening in this area. Now, the way I like to make this flat, the first thing I do is, is I have this nice little sanding board I have, and I just simply rub back and forth on this until I get the surface where I want it to be, so that I've roughened up the plastic itself. Now, once I use acetone, on this, it's going to open the, it's going to open up the surface for me to, for me to have a good bonding surface. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. Okay, now the two pieces are prepped and primed, as you can see right here. Uh, the surface is kind of glossy because that's acetone. Uh, this surface has been prepped and ready to go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my, I have a black rubber toughening adhesive that I use to build our speakers with, actually and I'm going to put a bead around this perimeter. The thing about CAs is that they do not need to be super thick beads to do a very good bonding. Actually, the thinner the bead is with the proper attachment, or uh, not, not attachment, I'm sorry, the, the proper um, uh, pressure applied and the surface being flat and everything, you, you minimize the amount of gap area between it. That actually is a really good bond surface. So what I'm going to do next is do that. Now, one of the things also I'm going to pay attention to when I do this is where my terminals are. Reason for this is, is that in the door, like I said, the window track is dead on the speaker like this. So I don't want to have my terminals down here because as the window comes down, it could catch the wire. So I'm actually going to set this off, and this will be toward the, uh, toward the A pillar area of the door where the, you know, the hinges and everything are. And so I've already decided that there's a marking inside that works perfect. See that mark right there in the middle, what's left over? That'll be. Now I've already had gone ahead and activated this piece. Now I've already gone ahead and put down my bead. I'm going to place my ring on. Now this is going to happen very quick, so you need to do this 
uh, as accurate as you can possibly do it. Now I'm going to press down on this thing all the way around. As you can see, you see how it comes out on the outside. So as long as your lines are good, you're, you'll be okay in terms of pressure. And there we go. One solid all the way around. Factory looking CX driver. Works like a charm. Now this can be done in a lot of vehicles. A lot of vehicles. Now if the motor is an issue and stuff like that, we do have a, in the X series it tapers. So it'll help. Now the difference between the two drivers is is basically motor. Uh, materials and stuff are pretty much the same. The covering's different. You know, the, the visual cover you see here. This is a, a, a fiberglass cover that uh, it has a, a car, it has a tight weave to it, so it looks like carbon fiber. But this is super thin. This is just cosmetic. The actual core of the driver is a real hot cell material, and so both the CX and the X are made of the of the same uh, material. It's just that the motor uh, changes uh, price point basically uh, between the two and stuff like that. And they do offer two different values. The X series will have a better high end, uh, a better top end uh, in comparison to the CX. But because I'm doing a horn, the CX is perfect. It's got to be a little bit more um, grit in the bottom end because of the, uh, uh, of the lack of motor, actually, in reality. It gives you a little bit more mid-base flare. Uh, it doesn't dry it up, basically. When you have a lot of motor, it dries up the response. It actually gives you a super accurate flat end response. And a lot of people don't like that. They want a little bit more grit in their base, in their mid-base, uh, because they believe that Okay, as you can see here, we got ourselves a factory looking. It's solid. It's on there just like the factory. All the gaskets and everything that the factory normally would have is on there. It works like a chain. And it even, I don't know if you can see it, but as you can see, that deep inside that regulator area, she is right next to that track. So one of the things I like to do is I usually put a piece of foam on the track or the back of the speaker so that it won't make a tapping noise and stuff because I mean at that close proximity this metal moves a little bit and so it'll it'll actually create some noise but other than that that's it that's how it takes to do this and this took uh, a whole rock and I mean really in all honesty take this this speaker out and to bond this one to it and then re-screw this back in this car we're talking maybe six minutes I mean, top six minutes in terms of doing it. Now, of course, taking the rest of the door apart, doing the deadening, etc., that's a different story. But just installing this speaker, maybe six minutes. That's how it easy it is to use our speakers and like minis and Toyotas and anything else because these rings are wonderful because these two surfaces bond. And we're talking about a bond that's not going to break. These, these two surfaces are now bonded to each other. I mean, they, this will never come apart. I mean, you will have to break the rest of this thing off to get that happen. One other neat bonus. Now this is a chameleon, so that means that the middle of this right here, this is, a, this is the face plug, comes out and we have actually a post. Now we're the first company ever to do this in terms of making a coaxial speaker uh, that is uh, removable so that it goes back both coaxial and also into a, into a uh, separate mode. Uh, hence the name chameleon. That's the reason why Eric called him chameleon originally. Now, the tweeter location, the stock tweeter location up here, will lend itself just perfect to fit our X28. It can fit up here with no problem. You just simply remove the tweeter. It comes out of its plastic casing, it pops out. And then you can reinsert it in there. You can either bond it to it, or you can come over the mount, you know, however you want to do it. But basically, it'll slide in this area, so behind the factory area, it'll work fine. Or, if you want to do it better, uh, you run it in a coax mode like this, and it's perfectly fine. But rem one thing about our uh, Chameleon and the X series is that our crossover is designed to allow you to either have it in a coax mode, a separate mode, or God forbid you do this in a tweeter, in a pillar, and stuff like that. We actually went through and redesigned the crossovers to allow specific movement of the tweeter around and adjust so that it would sound correctly. So anyway, that's it. That's all it takes to do a speaker in a door of a of a Mini Cooper. And 